ready. So today's gonna be a bit different. If you've been following me, you know that I covered this outreach day back in summer for Halls of Learning with Marvin. He, he introduces kids of all ages to robotics. That's computer science, that's a bit of coding, a bit of um, in engineering, math, and logic. Uh, you know, these are fundamental principles for any kid growing up today to compete in the world ahead. So we're gonna meet some very special kids that are gonna be competing in an international robotics competition. But more on that later, I'm going to eat the salad and get the hell out of here. So we are heading to St. Hughes, and that's where these kids are from. Stuck in a bit of traffic, so I'm not really driving in case you're wondering if I'm being reckless or not. Have to dig up KIG and the Ford Everest though, it's a beautiful vehicle. It is a seven-seater, diesel-operated loveliness. It's like I'm floating on a cloud pretty much most of the time. Uh, I'm gonna start wearing the shades so that I don't look like I'm cross-eyed by looking at the screen versus looking at the lens. Um, I know it's not as personal, but blame Casey nice that he taught that little trick. Um, I'm hoping to start up this little series. I feel like maybe I can work it into my daily routine. We'll see. I already have a pretty intense day. But um, I feel like this could be of value to some people. Uh, people definitely liked the video that I shared on the, the US Navy, Naval Hospital ship. Um, so I figured why not try to do more like that. And here we are. You can, you can leave comments, you can let me know what you like, what you don't like. Maybe long talking sequences like this while I'm on the way to a location is a bit boring. Or maybe you like hearing me talk. Maybe you, maybe you enjoy this little monologue I'm having with myself. It's a bit strange for me, but I'm gonna get try and get used to it. I'm gonna try to get used to it. But yeah, this is a new vlog, so. Continue straight past Babin's church onto Old Hope Road. Thanks, Google. Okay, reverse camera for the wind. remember Marvin from the Outreach Day video. He's the founder of Pause of Learning, which is a, you know, introduction into robotics for lots of kids all over Jamaica. But let me, let him introduce himself. So, hey Marvin, uh, let's talk about what we're doing here today. Hi, Marvin Hall, founder of Pause of Learning. And today we are visiting a World Robot Olympiad team. Pause of Learning is also the national organizer for the World Robot Olympiad in Jamaica. And today we're visiting the St. Hughes prep team who were first place um, winners in the elementary section of the recently held competition. So we're going to visit them as part of their preparation in the media studies room at St. Hughes. All right, let's go in. Yeah. Ah, team's already at work. Hi, I'm here with the St. Hughes prep school robotics team. They're the winners of the World Robot Olympiad Jamaica Finals in the elementary section. You guys, you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Victoria Bailey. I'm Isabel Dodd. And I'm Joel Dodd. Do you have a name for your robot? What's your name? Hi, first one, 10. My name is Sasha Wright. I'm the principal at St. Hughes Preparatory School. Hi, I'm Deandra Hepusuku. I am one of the coaches for St. Hughes Preparatory School. I am Anif Gordon. I am a, a coach of the St. Hughes Robotics team. When you guys are working together, what do you think is the secret to doing so well as a team? Just like to listen to each other and take into consideration what everyone says. We have to try both ideas without beating the other one down. So in a soft way, we try the one that seems most confident first 
And then if that doesn't work, we try with the second one. But we try not to beat each other down, so we raise each other high instead of making them less confident. How old are you guys? I'm 11. I'm 10, turning 11. And I'm 10, turning 11 as well. <laughs> You've had success placing second in 2018 and first in 2019. As you look towards the future and getting more students involved, how would you say you may go about your selection process? Well, the more we know, the easier it is for us to select who can be a part of it. Because initially, we didn't know what skills would be helpful, what would be useful, what kind of um, team traits or whatever it is would be good for the children and help them to work together, you know? But now, we know. And so that helps us far more. And also, it has generated quite a bit of excitement in the wider population. So you have more students who want to be a part of it because everybody wants to be on the winning team. So the team came second and they showed them the robot at assembly and we looked at it and the team came first and we had a fundraiser for the team in fact and they set up the whole board outside and all the parents and the kids came and looked at it and you have children who are now saying can I be a part of the team I want to be a part of it when before you may have had mm, I'm not so sure I want to give up X Y and Z to make this commitment so it will be that much easier for us to have a selection because we have more students interested but also on the side of the coaches they know better what to look for when we placed second last year, hear me, um, we were determined to come back this year to win. And I even said it to Marvin Hall that we're coming back next year for that trophy. And he said, yeah man, come, come for the trophy. So it was a lot more um, planning, a lot more studying, a lot of research, and making our team even stronger. Our students spent a lot more time on the robots. They dedicated their yeah, holidays, weekends. They spent um, lunch time. Their after school, when they could be playing outside, they were working on their robots and learning as much as possible. And um, also decided that we needed a stronger robot, a more stable robot. They learned from their errors from last year, and they came back with a much better robot. The competition this year was more so like. Uh, from a film, you know, the the first round of runs, we got zero, and then the second round was zero, and the third round got us enough points to make it to the final round. And then in the final round, the same thing happened. The first round was zero, the second round was zero, and then on our final run, we accumulated enough points to win the entire competition. Okay. So it was something sort of like from a film, mm -hmm. you know. It, so on the competition day, right? Your first score is zero, your second score is zero. What are you thinking at that point? And at that point, we're somewhat losing hope, but at the same time, we knew that if we travel this far, there's no way that we can give up now. So we put extra effort into it, and it worked out that we got the highest points so our confidence started and our self-esteem started to get higher that we still have another chance to win the competition. At that point I kind of thought that we weren't going to make it but at the same time there's this little voice inside of me telling me that it was going to work out. So it was going to work out and you would win or would just score? We would win. Yeah? Yes. Well, you won, so congratulations. Thank you. When our children do robotics, they are learning problem solving skills. They're learning teamwork skills. They're learning not to give up. They're learning how to learn from mistakes. They're learning by doing, learning by making. They have to build a robot, they have to make a program on the computer, they have to bring it all together. And they are learning about how to balance their own personalities. And as we heard earlier, keep everybody's confidence up. You know, disagree but don't kill someone's self-esteem. So more than anything, more than the technical skills, you can see the opportunity for children to develop as good people and future leaders by doing robotics. St. Hughes Prep Robotics on our way to hunger.